The Creator centers all units of creation. It is the Creator's energy which is creating creation continually. Universal mind is extended to every atom which moves around the Creator's omnipresent and immutable stillness, which man calls gravity. Our senses cannot acquire knowledge. They can only be informed of effects of motion, and they can be easily deceived. One only need to look at the moon as it races alongside of your car while you drive, or see the train tracks that meet on the horizon. Knowledge can only come through the mind. The Creator reveals itself through mind as the mind energy at the nucleus of every atom. All motion in the universe is the thinking mind of the Creator. The Creator's thinking is cyclic, but the energy source of the thinking is eternal. All of the energy of all creation is in the omnipresent vacuum of the zero universe of motion. The mistake made by academic scientists is that energy moves. The omnipresent stillness of space never moves. It is the fulcrum from which all motion draws its energy to move, but the fulcrum never moves. Every ultra-microscopic point in the cosmic vacuum of space is a fulcrum from which the Creator's omniscient mind desire is extended to express the ideas of universal mind. The Creator's mind desire is the only energy in the universe. Motion is only a lever which expresses the energy extended to it from the fulcrum. Electricity is the lever which simulates energy as an extension of the idea which always remains in absolute rest. That being said, we must now address the fallacy of the two kinds of electricity labeled by academic sources as positive and negative. Let us observe how illogical and impossible this claim is. Electricity does one thing only. It divides an equilibrium into equal sexed pairs of male and female, spiraling red and blue lights respectively. It then compresses them until they unite to create what man calls matter, which is an explosive condition around a still point of omnipresent gravity. It does not require two forces to compress anything. When any compressed condition is released, it returns to stillness without any force whatsoever. The still vacuum of space is the universal equilibrium. Any compression within space is an abnormal tension or strain from universal stillness and absolute cold. The still magnetic universe is without tension, strain, motion, curvature, or heat. All matter is compressed motion, and all compressed motion is explosive as it desires to return to the balance of universal rest. The zero universe of magnetic stillness is balanced. All created matter and motion eventually returns to the normal still condition of space which is the cause of all effect and the source of all energy. Early scientists decided that there were two types of electricity because the two opposite conditions of living and dying, growing and decaying, heating and cooling, polarizing and depolarizing, as well as all other effects of motion are expressed in seemingly opposite directions by seemingly opposite forces. There are no opposite directions or forces. There are only divided sexes which exert the same force in the same direction. The one force is compression and the one direction is spiral. That which seems to be two are one when they are united. They could not unite if they were pursuing opposite directions nor could they be one if they were opposites. Academic scientists did not account for the fact that motion is a cosmic abnormality, which is caused by a disturbance in universal stillness. The normal condition of the universe is a state of motionless rest. All motion is a created effect which emerges from rest and returns to it. Imagine a quiet pool of water into which a stone has been thrown. 
the normal quiet state of the pool has been disturbed by a force. The normal quiet state of the pool will return to rest and requires no opposite force to do so. The absurdity of Einstein's fallacious E equals MC squared equation becomes laughable in the face of cosmic truth. This very odd and disheveled fellow told us that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Then he multiplies the speed of light times itself in this strange, mathematical garble he plagiarized and took credit for. One must immediately ask what is traveling at 186,000 miles per second times 186,000 miles per second. Can you now see how the multitude of sensory-based groping of academic science, which is based on this bizarre mathematical drivel, has no relationship to reality whatsoever? Energy is not a product of matter, as is believed by the legions of students who pass through the systems of academic science. Energy comes from the fulcrum of stillness, which is unknown to academicians, being that their senses cannot perceive it and reduce it to tangible units which they can quantify and qualify in their system of taxonomical classifications, which they refer to as knowledge. This is not knowledge, it is a system of accounting, since knowledge can only be attained from the mind and not the senses, which are so easily deceived. Once again, we must reiterate that the biggest mistake made by academicians was removing the creator from its creation. If not for the immense closed-mindedness exhibited by the indoctrinated scientist for a creator, the false science taught in academia would never have had a foundation to build its many sandcastles upon. Unfortunately, the media promotes these so-called super geniuses and their disproved theories as truth, causing many students who truly desire to know the universe in which they live to become docile followers who worship and idolize these academicians and memorize by rote their false theories. The result has been the elimination of critical thinking and traditional deductive science, replaced by memorizing theories which have no relationship to reality, and then testing students to see if they remember those fallacious indoctrinated guesses as well. Academia now serves as a false and shallow interpretation of the universe, which has no resemblance to nature at all nor can it remotely explain its effects or its unseen cause, the omnipotent creator.